Uh, thank you, Helen, for uh, joining us today on Talks on Walks. Um, it's great to have you. Um, first off, I'd just like to talk a little bit about you. Um, so about what you do, um, you, who you've previously worked for, who you, pre who you work for now. Yeah, uh, so I'm the Operations Director of Ataraxia Broking Limited. Um, we are an investment company. We make minority investments into insurance brokers. And we also provide um, network um, uh, uh, facilities you know, with, with preferred insurer deals and lots of ancillary products. And currently we've got 26 investment brokers and, and we're ever growing. And we, you know, we're looking to target brokers that, uh, that that want to come with us on a growth journey, and also some that want some uh, exit and succession options as well. So quite varied. And I've been with Ataraxia now for, uh, so yeah. In fact, I'm coming up to my seven year anniversary. Then, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's 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 a, a diverse and interesting job. So it's, it, and my previous background. I've always been um, in the insurance industry, primarily broking, ever since I left university, actually, George. And um, I've had yeah. a variety of roles. They've all been at commercial insurance brokers. I've worked at regionals. I've worked at nationals. You know, I started off as a claims handler, then an account handler, then an account execs, and then th through management roles. Yeah, and I've worked cool. with you know, so it's, so, you know, Aon and Alexander Forbes, and then my most recent job before Ataraxia is I moved to Close Premium Finance, and that's a bank that provides the finance for the insurance industry. So, sure. yeah, so there you go. That's a, a whistle-stop <laughs> whistle tour of my insurance career. <laughs> Perfect. OK, so you mentioned there um, a bit about brokers, and you mentioned now about sort of Ataraxia and their investment into brokers. So. What would you say, obviously, you know a lot about the industry and you've had quite a journey through it. What would you say are their sort of biggest challenges or what, what, what's their first biggest challenge? If we take a look at okay. that. Okay. As, as with any industry, you always have a few burning issues, don't you, that are at the forefront, you know, things that keep keep you awake at night. And um, I would say for our broken community at the moment, there's, there's a few uh, and rate would be uh, would, would be a hot, hot topic at the moment. What you yeah. see now is, you know, insurers, and this is this is across the board, you know, commercial, personalised, etc. There's a lot of pressure on insurance companies with their rates. Basically, the cost of claims uh, has got has gone up. You know, we've seen climate change in recent years, wreaking havoc with floods, etc. Uh, another big factor is we've all seen it with our cars. You know. Is it they get written off very easily because the cost of repairing is, is so high? Yeah. And um, you know what? You know, what might have been a couple of hundred quid on a bumper ten years ago? You know, you're having to recalibrate an awful lot more. And uh, and so with this rising cost of claims, insurers are struggling with their loss ratios. And so what you're seeing is it it, it has to go one of two ways. They put the rate up or they reduce commissions or both and uh what we're seeing you know is a lot of a lot of our brokers are, are seeing uh insurers reducing their commissions uh to help uh you know, address this problem of course that that that's their income that, that that that's their business yeah and so you know if you if if you were earning 22 percent on, on on commercial combined and the insurers re reduce that down to 20 percent commission well you've just lost you know a, a chunk of income there that you've got to replace elsewhere sure sure so there's almost a bit of disruption going on in that industry and then yeah. you kind of take that element and then you then combine it with a couple of other challenges it sort of becomes very difficult for brokers at the moment um which i suppose then how, how do they sort of look to make a change? Maybe you could look at then improving for mergers and acquisi acquisitions, um, but mm -hmm. th then that comes with its own set of challenges, especially for our market. Well, you see what, you're absolutely right. And uh, I, I mentioned earlier that you know, we, we tend to partner with brokers looking for a growth journey and we support that. And so with the pressure on income, reduced commissions from insurers, et cetera, then what, there's various ways we look to to help brokers with the growth journey 
One is by trying to protect that core income with our insurer deals. As you say, mergers and acquisitions, that's that's quite a hot topic at the moment. And it certainly is with us because it's what we do. And um, uh, one of the quickest ways a broker can grow, of course, is by buying another broker. Sure. Yeah. And, um, and what you see is with the UK broker landscape, um, traditionally, there were quite quite a lot of companies that set up you know, in the 70s. You know, and these were guys that had maybe been uh, insurance reps for for a, a company back, you know, it would have been the Royal back in those days or, or, or the Prudential, these are old yeah. names. And, uh, and, and then they set up their own brokerage and been successful over the years. And that does tend to mean that the demographic of um, commercial insurance brokerage ownership is you know guys that are coming into you know 60s even 70s which means of course yeah. there's a lot of exit strategies to be put in play and of course you know again that that fuels that uh you know the the mergers and acquisitions activity because there's there's a you know the profile's good for it yeah what you do see is that with all this increased activity there's a lot of competition out there and so what what you do see is there are companies that have made it their business model to go on a huge acquisition trail, and uh, you know, uh, Aston Lark, PIB, GRP, you know, j- just you know, to name some some huge uh, and, and Howden's you know acquired Aston Lark, and they're all backed by private equity that's come from America, because. What what you see happening is that the multiples that we're offering over here, once you build a critical mass, that can then be picked up and then sold on the American market at a it's an even higher multiple. So private equity love that because they can you know spend away and then within that um, time window that they like, they can flip it again and, and maybe double their money. So it's. Yeah. Uh, it pays for a lively marketplace. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, I suppose then with, with that happening, and especially with the mergers and acquisitions, you find almost a lot of disruption with talent um, in mm-hmm. that. And then, but you've already got talent issues in the industry um, already. So it's almost, you know, a, another challenge on top of that is is finding the right people. Well, uh, you're absolutely right, George. One of the th- again, if you went out to our brokers and say, you know, what is one of your burning issues? Then actually, the talent pool uh, and, and retaining and sourcing good people would be right up there. I think traditionally, this has never been a particularly, for want of a better word, sexy industry to, sure. to attract <laughs> young people to. You know. Yeah. At school leavers, yeah, or university trade fairs, insurance is not up there as the in the number one wish list. And when you talk to other people in the industry, we all say, "Oh, never plan to get an insurance." And that tends to be, that tends to be the story. Nobody chooses it. We just find ourselves in it. And actually, it's a great industry. It's provided millions with very stable careers over the years. It's just there's been a lack of recruitment. Um, coming through and so yeah you know, i've got brokers that have been looking for you know good solid commercial account handlers and it, it and this, these would these jobs would be uh, sort of highly populated 20 years ago and now they're struggling to find quality staff and and that's only getting worse because there's not enough people coming into the industry we we've actually partnered with a company called Wiser Academy to try and address that. Who are uh, finding government funding to, uh, to sort of sponsor apprenticeships type schemes with with our brokers cool. and actually do trade shows. So yeah, we've got some steps to address it, but these things don't happen overnight, do they? No, no, of course not. And um, I suppose still, you know, on that talent side, you you've almost got you need you know bringing in that new set of talent and and finding the right people keeping your existing ones when it comes to looking investments and stuff how much of an impact does that have because obviously that almost sets the tone for what the culture is within a company as well yeah no it's a it's a really good question and and actually when um but when you're looking at an investment you you have to look at the longevity of it and keeping keeping the staff happy we all know human nature 
um, uh, it doesn't welcome change all the time. So obviously, when you are looking at investing in someone or, 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 or doing the merger and acquisition, most of the staff have a slightly apprehensive approach because they're wondering what it's all about. Yeah. And, uh, and so making sure that they're part of the process and keeping keeping the staff on side and keeping the culture right is is key to keeping the business and stabilising it. And so yeah, we we yeah, personally work very hard to make sure that everybody gets what they want. You know, when when, when looking at these things, yeah. Perfect. Thank. You. Um, what I would like to say is thank you for sort of covering those topic areas with me today. Um, I, I mean for myself, it's been super insightful. Uh, I've really enjoyed having you on the podcast today. Is there anything else that you'd maybe like to uh, tell tell people about in terms of it, is there anything you're promoting at the moment or is there anything you've got going on that people should know? Well, I suppose I would just refer to our website, www.ataraxia.co.uk and have a little look at what we do. Um, and we've got some good you know, examples, look at the partners that we have, because actually, we do so much more than just an investment. You know, what we do in terms of building for a growth journey and the sort of solutions that we can offer are really quite far reaching. So and there's, a, there's a contact us page as well. So I would actually say, you know, talk to us, whatever you think your challenge is. And uh, we, we, you know, we, we like to be challenged on uh, on ideas and we're good at it. Sure, perfect. And we can link, we can link all that as well in our description and everything so people can get to that very easily um Brilliant. thank you helen for coming on the podcast there on talks on walks we really appreciate you having you on um, and it's been great to talk about these different challenges and issues that um, brokers are facing at the moment oh good to talk to you too george thanks for your time